Um, any pre-show questions before we begin? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? God bless John Hughes, by the way. Okay. Folks, make sure you all come in here, because what's going to happen is during the presentation, we're going to dim the lights to black, so make sure you find a seat. You don't want to be stumbling around in the dark. I did that once during a panel, did not end well. So, uh, just want to let you do that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a presentation, we're going to have our guests up here speak, and then we're going to bring the lights back up. And we're going to do Q&A, we want you all to line up here at this microphone, and I am so desperate for you to ask questions. I am willing to bribe you. So if you ask a question, you will get a prize. Either you're going to get a wall scroll or some art posters by our uh, fan artist, our licensed fan artist, Timothy Chase. And one of the interesting history about Timothy was his licensed fan art. He can go to any convention and sell these legally. He has a license to do so. So Timothy's going to give these away for free for you. So. Okay, any uh, pre-show questions? Anyone? Yeah, right there. What time does the panel start, Dan? In about five minutes, so you're good. I promise you won't, you won't, have, you won't, you won't have to wait long. Oh, one other thing too, folks, before I forget. After this panel, our friends from Fox are gonna be doing a screening of Probopolis. We cannot stay on this stage. You know you want to ask some post question, uh, panel questions. We're all going to go outside to the hallway and talk out there. We know it's, it's really important that screening starts on time. So understand, if you run off the stage, it's not you. It's 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 Fox. You can play Fox. So. Tommy wants the stage. What? Tommy wants the stage. You want to speak, Tommy? Oh, not that. No, speak. It was interesting. I just wanted to mention that. Uh, uh, Titan's probably wondering where some early printings of their comics, which are not due until August, went. I guess I brought them here, and hopefully they don't mind that it's not coming back. I'm going to give them to whoever's here today. Whoever asks a good, whoever asks a good question. We have three minutes. Totally, I don't think you'd have a chance. I would ask for to dance. God bless. Vice President of Marketing for the Robotech franchise. I also run the Robotech Convention Tour. And folks, we have some awesome guests who want to take a moment to introduce up here before we dim the lights. First off, from 3-0, we got our friend Cody. <laughs> Cody, we got a friend. Who did you bring? Yeah, right. Gregory Pratt. All right. Uh, Please welcome Gregory. All right. Next to Cody, we have Tommy Yoon, our Creative Director. Gentlemen, uh, we have a very special guest and very exciting things here. Brandon, welcome to the Robotech franchise and welcome to our panel. <laughs> All right, folks, um, first thing we're going to do is wait, I want, come on in, folks. Find a seat. We're going to dim the lights here like, in just a couple of seconds here. Um, yes, we're going to dim the lights. We're going to go into pitch blackness. I want you to cuddle up with that special someone. And, yeah. Ooh. All right, yes. And folks, I, I, I hate to start the panel off on a bit of a downer note, but I have some very sad news to relay today. Our chairman, Frank Agrama, the founder of Harmony Gold, passed away peacefully this spring at his home with his family by his side. Born on January 1st, 1930, Frank was 93 years of age. You know, Frank was a one of a kind. It was Frank, along with legendary producer Carl Masek, who helped bring Robotech into existence. But also, he helped launch the modern day anime boom we all enjoy today. We ask everyone in this room to join us in a moment of silence as we remember our chairman, our founder, and yes, our friend, Frank and Rama. Thank you. Now, let's discuss our panel rules. First off, 
Comic-Con only allows audio and video recording from parties who have obtained a film location agreement. You are encouraged to take photos of the slides, but we ask for everyone's enjoyment. Please do not use flash photography. We encourage all fans to use hashtag Robotech, hashtag SDCC on social media for everyone's enjoyment. Please silence all mobile devices and hold all the questions until the end. We have plenty of time for Q&A. And with that out of the way, my fellow Robotech fans, members of the industry, and invited guests, welcome to San Diego Comic-Con and the Robotech Past Prologue panel. Let me hear ya! As I said before, my name is Kevin McKeever. I'll be your host for this evening. And let's start off with a brief update on the Robotech live-action film set up over at Sony Pictures. In April of 2022, Sony Pictures announced that Iron Man co-writers Art Markham and Matt Holloway are writing the script for the live-action Robotech film. And we are pleased to announce we have a new director. His name is Rice Thomas, who directed numerous episodes of Hawkeye on Disney Plus for Marvel Studios. Now folks, everyone's asking, what is going on with the live action film? We've been hearing about the Writers Guild strike and the SAG strike, and sadly, both of these strikes have impacted the film at this moment. Right now, everything is on hold until the Writers Guild strike and the SAG strike ends. Once these strikes end, we promise you it will be full steam ahead. But while we're waiting for those strikes to end, we are pleased to announce a new license. The Good Smile Company is now part of the Robotech team. Many of you know Good Smile as one of the leading makers of anime merchandise from Japan. And we are so excited they have joined the Robotech franchise. They have t-shirts right now on sale at booth 4045 down the exhibit hall. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, they have brought back the skate decks, which are available right now at booth 4045. We also have a brand new license. Their name is Atsuko. Atsuko has launched their own line of Robotech merchandise starting with their own line of t-shirts. Here's a look at some of the designs. They also have a line of hoodies, which are available right now at Suka. Plus our friends from Udon have their own line of Robotech apparel with Robotech t-shirts available right now at the Udon booth down, at, down on the Comic-Con floor. And we also have another apparel license, Culture Kings. They have launched a line of Robotech t-shirts and hoodies for both men and women. And lastly, we are pleased to announce a company called BioWorld has their own line of, of, of apparel as well. And you can buy these right now at Target. Yes. And our friends at Udon have some important news regarding the Robotech art books. We are pleased to announce that the Robotech, the new generation art book, is now available, and thus all three art books, the Macross Saga, the Robotech Masters, and the new generation, are now shipping from Udon Studios. And now it's a good time to move on to our friends from Kids Logic. You see, last year, Kids Logic launched their own line of Robotech wristwatches. However, when they were announced, they immediately sold out. But don't worry, Kids Logic has launched a, a wave two of wristwatches, and you can order these right now at kidslogic.toys. Plus, and Dan, you'll be pleased to know about this, the Robotech 1 6 scale Dana Sterling statue is now shipping from Kids Logic. You can buy this right now, it is outstanding. It's over a foot tall, it is beautiful. We also have an important update from our friends at Strange Machine Games. We are pleased to announce that Robotech Reconstruction has been unloaded at the dock in Long Beach and is now shipping. 
This game takes place in the great aftermath of the Battle of Dolce's Armada, and here is some of the interior artwork. Here's a look at the gameplay itself, and Robotech Reconstruction is shipping right now for $45. But many of you are asking, well, Kevin, what about the role-playing games? Well, Strange Machine Games has relaunched the role-playing game under a completely new system. The Macross Saga is now shipping for $60. And everyone's asking, well, Kevin, this is Macross. All we've been seeing so far is Macross, Macross, Macross. Will we get a new generation, or even better yet, a Masters role-playing game? The answer is yes. Would you like to see it? Yeah. Here it is.
Dogfight miniature game is now shipping from our friends at Kids Logic. You can order this right now. What do you think? Pretty cool? Yeah. Well, yeah. And of course, speaking of figures, let's talk about action figures for a moment. Our friends at Kids Concept have launched their complete line of 112 scale Robotech the Macross Saga action figures. These are, this is wave one that's out right now. And wave two will be followed by a new Rick Hunter variant. And folks, you might remember this original flight suit. The suit is made of actual cloth. So, yes. And some of you are probably saying to yourself, well, Kat, this is great, but there's something missing here. Something's like missing. It feels like something, we need something fishy. <laughs> yes, they have actually made a variant of this with the giant tuna head. And believe it or not, folks, there's another variant of the tuna head that's actually boiled. So you can order these right now from our friends at Kids Concept. And speaking of action figures, Kids Concept is pleased to announce the Max Sterling figure, 112 scale. Fully articulated, and it's a little tough for you guys to see from here, but his uniform is made of actual cloth as well. And this will be coming out in the fall of 2023. But you know, folks, many of you are asking, Kevin, these are great, but what about the Cyclones? Well, friends, our, fr our friends at Toynami and B25 have launched a new line of Robotech Cyclones, starting with the Scott Bernard, the Rand, and yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Lancer. All three of these, you can go right down to the Toynami booth down at 3229 here on the exhibit hall floor and uh, get them. But if you go down there, you're going to see something new. Because these are relatively small, 1285 scale. This, however, Toynami also has a super cyclone down there right now. This will include LED lighting and working turn signals. Yes. And speaking of going big, if you go down there, you will also see the new Toynami Alpha Fighter. And yes, folks, it fully transforms. But there's something really cool George told me yesterday. He said, you know what? You might notice something. It's a little tough for you to see, but notice what the Alpha Fighter's holding. It's holding a pilot. This will actually be able to interact with the B-25 Cyclones that are out right now. So you'll be able to interact at the same, roughly the same scale as the B-25 Cyclones. So stay tuned for more information later on in the months ahead. And of course, we have our new licensed Jada Toys with their new Hollywood Rides line. These 124 scale die cast cars are now available in the Rick Hunter, Roy Foker, Max Sterling, and Miria Sterling variants. All four of these cars are available right now from our friends at Jada Toys. And many have asked us, Kevin, do they come with the figures? The answer is yes. Now, we talked with our friends at John Toys, and they said they're completely sold out at their booth. However, you can buy these at Target. Yes. And we also have another awesome license we're really proud to bring here on the stage. Our friends at 3.0 have launched their new VF1J. You know, Cody, I want to bring you in here on this. Because tell us about this toy. Because a lot of people are asking us questions. Uh, yeah, one of the biggest questions we've been receiving is if this is fully transformational, and we can confirm that it's perfect transformation. Uh, we've got a die cast interior frame technology, so you're going to feel that durability and uh, the uh, posability that you'd look for for a high end collectible figure. And I can confirm that the pricing on this is going to be 149.99. And Cody, is there any, when, when are fans going to be able to pre-order this? Do you know yet? Do we have some information on that? Yeah, pre-order should be launching within the next two to six weeks. Uh, if you keep following uh, 3.0 social media, that's 3.0 HK, uh, you'll see that announced very soon. We have the prototype, or had the prototype, here at San Diego on display at our booth. 
but he's going to be flying out to ACG Hong Kong to make his debut over there. Yeah. And, and Cody, will these be available on Amazon as well? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We've got an Amazon store, Amazon.com slash 30, written in alphabeticals as you see on the screen. And it will absolutely be available for pre-order there. Awesome. Great. Thank you, my friend. Now, speaking of Hong Kong for a moment, our friends at Kids Concept have their own line of 172 fully transformable VF1s. The Skull Leader's available, along with the Rick Hunter VF1J, and the Maximiria, and our mysterious God of Flame variant. Oh, wait, you're like, Kevin, what's the God of Flame, you ask? I'm, I'm sorry, folks. I know, you all know what the God of Flame looks like. Remember this one? Yes. Well, folks, sadly, when they put this up for sale, it sold out right away. However, Kids Concept has a limited number of units in stock. Sadly, one of the retailers never placed their deposit, so they have like maybe less than 100 of these units remaining. So if you want to get this classic paint job, by all means, go to our friends at kidsconcept.com. Order these now, because when they are gone, they are gone. But the God of Flame also has his evil twin brother. <laughs> and so this is, this is available right now at kidsconcept.com. And you know, speaking of this, we're all thinking of that um, other giant transforming robot franchise from that other company we shall not name. It's a good time to bring up, folks, and this is something we're going to reveal here today. The Robotech Convention Tour is now going to be part of BotCon, the Transformers Convention in East Rutherford, New Jersey in August. We just booked the show. We're very excited to be attending BotCon. And I have a feeling we'll be asked about the God of Flame a lot. So there's BotCon. And also, folks, we are also pleased to announce that Kids Concept will have a special dark blue stealth version. Yes, which, is, which you can order right now from them. But let's talk about, for a moment, Robotech in high definition. Many of you have been asking, is Robotech going to be on Blu-ray? The answer is yes. Robotech is now available in 1080 on Blu-ray. Each of the box set comes with an exclusive Veritech fighter dual pack with a Roy Fokker action figure. And we're pleased to announce that all 85 episodes of Robotech are now streaming worldwide, excluding Japan, in HD on Crunchyroll. It is joined by Robotech the Sentinels, which is also streaming worldwide, in excluding Japan, on Crunchyroll. And yes, Robotech the Shadow Chronicles is now streaming worldwide, excluding Japan, and on Crunchyroll. And folks, there is still more to be revealed between the Funimation, as both Funimation and Crunchyroll merge over the next in the months ahead. But folks, folks talk about Robotech streaming we need to take a moment to talk about this new Macross series that was announced. Um, it was announced last month. Apparently, it's been announced that there's going to be a new Macross series by Sunrise, and everyone is asking us, what does this mean? What does this mean for the 2021 Macross agreement that was announced? Here are the rules of the road moving forward. Number one. The Macross sequels from 1987 to 2021 have been cleared for worldwide release. However, certain Macross sequels, such as Do You Remember Love and any future sequel containing shared characters, mecha, and or storyline are currently prohibited. Licensing opportunities for the 1987 to 2021 Macross sequels will be handled by Big West. The agreement also recognizes Harmony Gold's long-standing exclusive license with Tatsunoko for SDF Macross and the use of the 41 Macross characters and Mecha in the Robotech television series 
and related merchandise throughout the world, excluding Japan. Thus, licensing opportunities for Mac, SDF Macross and the use of the 41 Macross characters outside of Japan will be handled by Crunchyroll and Harmony Gold. And folks, moving forward, both parties will cooperate on distribution regarding future Macross and Robotech projects for the benefit of both franchises. Now that question answered, let's talk about Robotech Comics, and namely with our friends from Titan Comics. You know, we're going to have a new Robotech comic called Robotech Recountry, which will debut August 3rd, 2023, and it's going to be written by our good friend, Brandon Easton. Brandon, I want to bring you here in the conversation, as well as you, Tommy. Tell us about these new Robotech comics. What are they about? What's the deal? I think the title says it all. Uh, one thing uh, that came up with uh, Titan, uh, of course, many of you are aware that uh, COVID had upended many industries, uh, including comics. And so there was a period of time when there, uh, there was a pause in publishing of uh, Robotech Comics. And one of the things that came to mind with Titan, they had a great run up until that time, uh, culminating in Robotech Remix by Brendan Fletcher, a wonderful miniseries. But at that point, so many comics have been, had been out. A uh, big question was, how do we make something after that long pause that's friendly to new readers, something where fans can jump right in with a character that they're instantly familiar with, even if they're passingly uh, familiar with Robotech. And um, we decided to have Brandon and Bor on this to make a story about Rick Hunter. And I'm actually so happy about this because I had actually been chasing trying to get Brandon and Bor on Robotech for quite some time. Yeah. yeah. Brandon, yeah, look, to, look, welcome. What do you, tell us more about the comic. Tell us what you Sure, mean. sure. So um, one of the things I always hear is that, you know, we want something new, we want something different. And as a fan, I mean, I was a kid in 1985. I saw the first episode, the first time it ever aired live, you know. And one thing I'll say is that um, there was always a period of time, whether you're talking about the novels, the animated series, or whatever, other media, that I always wanted to see, which is that time between the end of Macross and technically the beginning of Sentinels and also the beginning of Southern Cross. So this takes place, ooh, nice. This takes place um, a little bit of time after the destruction of SDF-1 and SDF-2 while the SDF-3 is being built in orbit. And it is a brand new story, it is not a retread. There are flashbacks to important moments. But one of the things I really wanted to do and this is something we never really think about, is that Rick never really had a proper, you know, po like post-adolescent or even adolescent period, because the moment he steps foot on Macross Island, his whole life is embroiled in warfare. So what does that do to a person? How do they view the world from that point on? And I felt like this would be a great time to explore his thoughts and feelings in a way that we didn't really see except in the novels, but unfortunately some of those novels, as I understand, are not really canonized anymore. Well, I don't know if they ever really were, but you got a little bit more of Rick, particularly in the Sentinels. I wanted to bring some of that Rick Hunter back into the fold. So you're gonna get him with Vince Grant, a character who's been woefully underused, and some new faces you've never seen before, and a villain that you may have seen before but don't remember. And you'll find all that out if you go and check out the uh, book particularly uh, you know, the first issue, which is available. I think there's an exclusive available down at the Titan Comics booth, and I'll be signing that tomorrow at, I believe, 11 a.m. But um, you have to understand something. I'm a fan. I've been there since day one. Um, I was not some, like, you know, rogue for hire, some just random hack. You know, I really... No, I'm not saying anybody before me was. I'm not saying that at all. No, trust me, I'm not. Because I love Simon Furman, I love uh, Brian Wood, and a lot of the other folks. But I'm just saying that for me, this is like from my heart. Like, I read every novel. I read the Eternity comics, the Comico comics. I read Robotech 2, the Sentinels books, all the way up with the Waltrip Brothers, all the way to the end. I read the Bill Spine, Spangler, um, uh, Malcontent Uprisings, when it was coming out in comic shops. So this is not someone who's just like stepping in there with, you know, tipping it, sticking their toe and saying, oh, I like Robotech. No, I've been there since day one, literally. So this is an honor, a privilege, and I am 
I am still shaking that my name is on a rubber tech book. So you have to understand that's where I'm coming from. So, you know. Thank you. I know you want to explain Can you tell people who haven't read the comic just a little bit more, like what, and really, really be on the base or anything else you want to tell? Well, sure. So basically, you know, Rick has been promoted to Major General. Um, he has to deal with Anatole Leonard, you know, and, um, you know, and you're going to get to see some interactions you've never seen before. By this point, I know that the covers for issue two have already shown up online. So one of the very interesting things is if you look at the very first image, as well as the last image, actually all of them have Glo Captain Global on it except for the third one. But do you realize that I don't think we ever saw a Global and Rick sit down and have a conversation? Ever. You will see that in issue two. And they're going to talk like people in the middle of, you know, uh, some serious stuff that was going on. So I said there are flashbacks, but the flashbacks are all to propel the new narrative. Because there's things I feel like on SDF1 we never saw. And you're going to see some of that stuff, particularly the fact that most likely Vince Grant was on the SDF1. He had to be. So what was, what was he up to? What was going on at that time? Um, yeah, so that's basically, you know, I don't want to spoil too much. But I will say, and I don't know if we can, I mean, the villain's name has been revealed, right? What has it been? Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. I was yeah, it's, it, it, it is it is in the solicitation copy for people who read the diamond previews. Which is but, the three people, gotcha. But uh, <laughs> uh, the interesting thing is, uh, Brandon has really read it all. So he's actually digging up stuff from all sorts of continuity, like details that are from the novels are in there, details from the video games are in there. So you'll see interesting things from the video game series uh, rear their heads in the series. Yeah, because I want to say, I, you know, I spend a lot of time, because I'm a real fan, I, I spend a lot of time on Robotech fan boards and message boards, and I, I hear the fears and complaints, and I'm just saying, this is a new story, written by a person who was there since day one, like many of you folks. I'm Gen X, folks. So, I get it. You know. Correct. You don't have very long to wait. So it's August third. But for those of you who come see Brandon tomorrow morning at eleven a.m., um, it's at the Titan booth. It's five five three seven. But it's actually kind of hard to find because that number is out of sequence with the other booths around it. It's actually near the entrance to the C entrance, yep. ne right next to Diamond. But uh, Brandon will be there with advanced mm -hmm. copies of these. Uh, so they, uh, Titan actually had. A bunch of these flown in, so you can have this before anyone else. And it's a it's an exclusive cover. It's not it's a cover that people want to get. That's the one. That's the Comic Con exclusive. So this will not be in stores. This is ever convention only. And also, just so you know, September. This is this is this issue two coverage, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, and this will be out September 6, thousand twenty-three. Awesome. Very, very cool. Well, folks, guess what? It's time for Q&A. Who wants to win some prizes? <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, God. That was awesome. <laughs> okay, oh, look out. I have a feeling this is insane. <laughs> All right. So, folks, once again, we ask you to keep your questions brief. Very brief. We ask you to keep your questions brief so everybody can uh, try to get an answer. Dan, you're up. First question, what's up? I've seen on your social media, uh, your Robotech, uh, you keep posting the same picture of a uh, Robotech Battle Cry standee from 2002. Yeah, it's, um, you keep like teasing that standee. I'm thinking, I mean, you re-released the Game Boy Advance game recently for Switch, and you remastered it, you know, and you keep posting a picture of that standee of a Battle Cry game. That's a really popular game that fans like. And a lot of the original voice actors returned for that game. You know, I'm thinking, what are the possibility of remastering that for current systems we have right now? Yes. What a great idea. We're gonna we're gonna remember you when that happens. Yes. Good question, Dan. But to answer the other question, why do we keep reposting that? Because the the post does very well on social media. It's very viral. That's why we keep posting it. So here I'm gonna give you some Robotech fan art by Timothy Chasey. Come on up. All right. Next question, sir. Uh, last year, or last year, I asked the question about uh, could a 
vendor possibly make a toy version of the hover tank? Because you have Toynami, you have Kids Concept, you have so many vendors making the Veritech fighter. But I've never seen a hover tank made since, since Matchbox. Matchbox. Can somebody make a hover tank? That possibility, or that's actually something some of the licenses are looking at, because you'll notice that there are more Southern Cross toys now than there were before. Like there was a dry period where they were impossible to find, but they're slowly making their way back. Okay. Uh, ooh. <laughs> I, I can't I can't reveal because uh, you know the license. There are licensees who wants to be who want to be first. With their version of the toys, I, I, hope, I hope. I hope that. Is. Thank you. Yep. Here you go. You can also know my friend. Excellent. Wow. Next question, sir. Uh, my question is in regards to the mini tech. We've had the models for a little while now, and with the launch of the actual rule set to play, uh, my question pertains to the fact that you're releasing the individual uh, art for the role player. Are we also going to get a release of the mini tech for the invid and masters? You mean you mean the miniature game? Yes. Well, you see, the role playing game is, is it, did, they're two separate companies. I very much oh, okay. understand right. that. It's it's more of the are we going to get more of the mini tech? Would you like more like the mini tech for the other two sides? Very much yes. We will let his we will let his logic know. So yes. So come on up here and get a uh, robot tech. Yeah, all right, sir. Yeah, um, to that, a harmony gold, sorry for the loss of Frank Agrama, mm. and to any member of the Agrama family that might be here. I have one uh, question, as in uh, a question that was asked last year about remaking that of the Sentinels. As in, with the original series of the narration, could that, if you actually do do that, can you actually? redo the narration within the car, the series as well. Tommy, that's... Redo the series, oh, you mean yeah, the Sentinels? As in for the Sentinels, it, yeah, how the original series was with the narration, with the, the professor narrating. Right. And uh, well, continue the narration as yeah. in the continuation tying in from the last. Uh, okay. Keeping a narration going with, with the, you know, tying the series all together with a narration. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, there was there was the change in the narrator from uh, uh, to over to the professor from the original uh, TV series, and unfortunately, uh, that voice actor had passed away. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that I mean, it can be done. It would just have to be recast. But that's that's not a project that's on our timeline right now. But you know, that's uh, that's definitely interesting to see the interest there. Mike, it's well school. 15 minutes for Q&A, folks. Next question, Good sir. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, since we have the PlayStation 5 now, is there any plans for a brand new game for it? Uh, Sony, as you know, has a very interesting, has a, a interest in video games, but they, they want to wait until they can find a AAA distributor and publisher to make sure there's a good Robotech video game in the market. So that's what they're waiting on. So I'm going to give you a wall scroll. Come on up here, sir. All right, next question. Uh, a, a few years back, we had the uh, release of the 25th anniversary model kit for the uh, Veritech fighters. Uh, are we going to be seeing any more model kits uh, coming out uh, that allow us to build the Veritech fighters or any of the other uh, Macross vehicles? Are you sure you're not confusing that with the Macross model kits? Uh, the mm -hmm. Japanese model. Yeah, yeah. So those, those, that's what I'm the reading. Hasegawa. Yeah, those, so those uh, those are being released on uh, the Japanese timeline, as in the 1982 release of Macross. So Robotech anniversaries are running from the uh, 1985 timeline uh, in terms of its release in the United States. So um, we our next big anniversary would be uh, two years away. So that's. Uh, that is something that we don't have a model maker announced right now, but we did have Ravel before. Come on, get your fan art. All right, next question, sir. Hey guys, thanks so much hey. for coming out. You're making Comic Con really awesome for everyone. And just a quick question, as you think about, uh, there are all three unrelated anime that came together and stitched together in a coherent narrative. 
Was there ever any thought, instead of sort of mining the time between those narrative, narratives, to actually think what happens after the invert and whether there was something that would come after the invert to extend the series even out beyond uh, where it was? That, that was the purpose of Robotech the Shadow Chronicles. Uh, that started from, oh, what if we had an 86th episode? Mm. And so that's how that project came about. And also Sentinels came about to bridge the timeline in between Macross and Southern Cross. And actually what Bra Brandon is writing right now is uh, adding to that. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Up. Sir, next question. So very excited to hear about all the things you're working on, Brandon. Super excited to have you on there. Um, I did have one technical question. So uh, during the, um, you are talking about the rights agreement and the use of existing mecha and uh, characters. So as that live story or that live movie is coming out, are we going to be looking at different ships and different types of characters? Uh, Sony Pictures has the rights to all 85 episodes of Robotech. They can approach it from any direction they wish. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Yep. Here, come on again. Do you well? Yep. Next question. Hey, y'all. I was at the Tanami booth, and I loved the back I mean, the Cyclones. There was one that was missing, though. Are we going to get a Rook figure? That's a good idea. <laughs> but you are going to get a, you're gonna get a rook, rook artwork. How's that sound? <laughs> Next question. So I watched Robotech back in Peru in Spanish, and I was curious if the DVD or the high definition one will have also dubbing in Spanish. That's something they're working on. Uh, there is a question of uh, which version to use. The, ver the remastered version that's out right now has the early 2000 voice cast. And then there's also been some retro releases of uh, the original voice cast from the 80s. Uh, the only difference there is uh, that video master is not remastered. So the, the timing, it actually doesn't line up with the remastered episodes. They're actually shorter. So you know, it's a question of uh, when we do the different language versions, what's going to sync up in streaming. More for nostalgia. Maybe. Yeah, but that is that's a good question. Excellent question, sir. So with Robotech now becoming, uh, well, I mean it's already been pretty big at least in my head, but um, getting bigger and bigger as I ask this kind of the same question every year, but the faces get younger and younger, which is kind of what I'm looking for, you know. Um, with it being now in Robocon, do you think that that's going to be like? that thing that gets the ball really rolling, so like people my age kind of fall into it. Well, it's funny you bring this up, because Robotech, as you see, is streaming on Crunchyroll right now. Okay. We're getting a whole bunch of new people discovering it because it's streaming on Crunchyroll. So you think Robotech's designed for binge watching, right. and it's ready to go. And the controversy, yeah. controversy for Robotech, ironically, you hear the Macross purists always scream, ah, Harmony Gold's evil, Harmony Gold's dead. People want to tune in and find out what is this show. So we're getting a younger audience coming in now and finding out what's going on because we're able to watch it because where do people watch now? They watch it on streaming. It's on, it's on Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll and Sony consider it to be a very high priority. Excellent question, sir. So I'm going to give you an SDF1 painting by Timothy Chasen. All right. Yes. Sure. Um, um, is it one character robot actually will want to interact with? I'm sorry, it's my dad. Is it one character that you want to interact with or talk to? Um, is there one character that you want to interact with? Who would I want to interact with the character? Angelo Dante. Because <laughs> he, he takes crap from no one. <laughs> and speaking of Southern Cross, here you go, you're getting Nova Satori because she takes crap from no one either. Here we go. Excellent question. Yes, sir. Do you guys ever plan on working with Funko for any of your lines? Would you like us to work with Funko? Yes, absolutely. We will, we will let our friends at Crunchyroll know. All right? Thank you. Come on up. <laughs> Sir? Uh, yes. Uh, do you ever love the movie? Is that, uh, what, when the current agreement expires, is it possible that you guys might be able to do it? Or is this going to always be Right now, there are, there are numerous moving targets that prevent you and Merle from being released. When it occurs, when the moving targets are reached, whenever that happens, and folks, they're moving very fast. We will let you know. Until then, right now, it's prohibited, and sadly. And once that changes, we'll let, we'll let you all know. Come on up and get your prize. Yes. Yeah. Hello. My question is about the, also the movie too. Um, also, when um, basically is, is there going to be any more movies that I need the warps or anything like that to represent different sagas? Wait. The 
There was live action movies? Yeah, live action movies, yeah. Or just, just one right now. Oh, right now, Ro Sony views Robotech like a Harry Potter franchise. That's the best answer I can give you for right now. So, I'll give you an idea of what, how they view it as. Right now, they're working on that first one because they know, and folks, we've all seen anime adaptions that haven't worked. Do not say their name. <laughs> They know, Sony knows the first movie has to be good. Because that's what makes gives you a franchise like Harry Potter. So, just to give you an idea of what, what's going on. We can't, can't talk about anything further beyond that. So, Thanks. Come on up here. Keep your uh, artwork, all right? Sir. Back in the 80s, I have an SDF-1 that's five feet long. Okay. I noticed there's not very many, there it is, there's not very many SDF-1 toys coming out. Okay, but I sold a lot of SDF-1 toys back in the 80s. And that's when that paper one came out that was five feet long. Right. Are they doing it? Because do you, are they going to make more SDF ones? Kids Logic has made a three foot tall SDF one that's LED lighting is a Bluetooth capable sound system. It's one it's one twelve hundred scale. How much is it? It's about fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 there are some other licenses that are working on it right now. They the paper one. Was five, five feet long, yeah. yeah I, I have a few of those, but it's so weird. That was 35 bucks back in the yeah. <laughs> Inflation's a killer, folks. What can you do? Come on up, get your mic. Yes, next question. Excellent. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Robotech was super popular in Mexico and Latin American countries, and the Spanish dog was masterful, uh, but there's no way to see it done right now that you have to. Dig deep in the internet to get that kind of thing. So, is there any kind of folks that will have the Spanish, the original Spanish dog? The, the last release they had of that was on DVD. So, there, there, there was a DVD release of that version. Uh, but uh, it's not on streaming yet. So, that, that is something, you know, the, the demand is something that uh, uh, Crunchyroll is very interested in researching. Cool. Thank you. What? Did you run? Did you run? Sir, next question. Yeah, somebody has been watching it since the 80s. Uh, you know, we have a new generation. What's the best way to kind of get the next generation interested? Because they're not able to pop it open. I know we got streaming, but they don't have Saturday morning cartoons. They don't have afternoon when they come home from school. So yeah. what are the challenges there? Well, the challenge is, you know, the, the environment Robotech first premiered in, which was afternoon prime time, no longer exists. And people... People watch their stuff on streaming now. It's not just the younger audience. Everybody watches it on streaming. The broadcast networks and City Park are dying. We all heard those rumors of a broadcast network being sold by a big company, I won't say the name, but it's actually, they're up for sale. The cable TV bundle and the broadcast sort of system that we grew up with is dying. Streaming is the future, and that's where that younger audience, more importantly, not just the younger audience, but everybody's gravitating. So that's how you reach them, because as I said before, you know, people are talking, still talking about Robotech, even though it's almost 40 years. And people, they hear it, they want to find out. We've had people come in to the panel, just they want a place to sit down, and now they're fans. So there's just lots of ways to reach out to fans. Come on up and get your wall scroll. All right, four minutes, folks. Make it, make it fast. Lightning round. Next, here, here. Two brief questions. Number one, and they both involve Brandon. Brandon, stand up. <laughs> I want to see Robotech baseball jerseys, football jerseys, and not have to spend the extra money to customize my own jersey like I've been doing. Number two, directly to Brandon, beyond the Rick Hunter arc, do you have other ideas for future Robotech stories? Absolutely. You kidding me? Yes. <laughs> I have a whole lot of ideas. All right, sir. Hi, uh, will the original series be in Japanese um, on Crunchyroll? We can't comment yet. We would like to see it released, but right now, folks, the original Robotech series in English yes, is selling very well. Southern Cross and must be yeah, well. it's selling very, very well. So we want to sort of like let, let, let that cycle kind of run through at the moment. Once we have more information on Macross, Southern Cross, and Mospita, the original Japanese series, we will let you all know. Okay. Okay. So come on up here and we'll give you a Robotech, sir. Uh, so with the Robotech franchise having, you know, 40-ish years of history, for newer fans, where would be the best jumping-in point that you would recommend someone to start? 
Episode Trap. one. Yeah. <laughs> first season. Booby Trap. Robotech, Robotech is made for binge watching. It's serialized long before serialization was cool. So, thank you. Here, come on up and get the skull leader. Final question. Very serious question. Actually, very silly question to ask in a very serious tone. Mech or Gundam? Yeah. Gundam is a mech. Yeah. Well, because there's some internet meme where, you know, some folks are, oh, the mechs are attacking. No, the, it's Gundam, and they get into an argument about what, what terms to use. Right, uh, yeah. Uh, um, I guess I was looking at me for some reason. Uh, I mean, Gundam is specific to that, you know, uh, to that franchise. Whereas Mecca is, you know, uh, a wider umbrella. Are there any educators in here? Any public school teachers or any, any, any chance? All right. All right. The reason, the reason I ask that is because I used to be a public school teacher in New York. And <clears> one of the ways that I got kids into things, we had an after school anime club. So if you want to know, I mean, if you have legal access to children, you know. <laughs> It's like, show Robotech. Start with Booby Trap. I mean, what we did, we watched uh, like Naruto back in the day, the One Piece once in the, back in the day. We watched, uh, what else, uh, like Gundam, you know, Gundam Wing, and you know, uh, stuff like that. Just so that they can see it. A lot of this is just a lack of access because Robotech has not been on commercial broadcast TV in quite some time. But they say the best time to get anybody as a fan is between the ages of six and 13 and they become a fan for life. So if you are like a middle school, elementary school teacher, and you have like after school clubs or recreation, or even like Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, just find a way to show Robotech. Just put it on and see, what they, see how they react. Yeah, Sunday, Sunday's here. Yeah. The Twitter, the tweets are gonna be epic on this one. <laughs> <laughs> folks, but folks, we're done. Thank you all, gentlemen, thank you all.